Hey everybody, Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. I got a big update for you this afternoon. Not only the moderate section, we also have our tornado areas that has increased as well for tomorrow. And we still have what's going on for Wednesday and Thursday. I think we could even have some for Friday and Saturday, maybe even all the way till Sunday. I'll show you the latest information. We have a potential for another derecho. Now, just like I told you the other day when we had the one for Texas and went towards Houston and went into Louisiana, then I showed you the one that was happening for Kansas that did go into Missouri, actually became one meso cyclone. But look at this. This actually gets really strong for tomorrow. Then we get our warm front and our cold front. Look at this. You got your warm front pushing out here. You got your cold front pushing out here. And here's your surface low. And now you got the system pulling all this straight north. Now this is where it starts banding out. Because now you got the winds pushing out on this band going to the east. You also have some banding on the northern side pushing out to the north. And look how far that stretches all the way until our next day of severe weather. We need to watch for this banding as this cold front comes out from these warm temperatures. Remember, got the heat dome over Central America still, and we got that cold front coming down. So it's really going to make for a powerful storm. Now, to qualify for a derecho, and we did have ours over 400, 450 miles now, to qualify for a derecho, I believe it's 240, 250 miles of at least 58 towards 60, 58 to 60 miles per hour wind gusts almost the whole time while that's going across. So let's go through this real quick. So first for the rest of the night, we still have some storms pushing through. Remember that all this time and date is on the top left. This is central time. So we still got our storms that's pushing through. We still got our chances for tornadoes. Matter of fact, it has increased a little bit right here for Milwaukee and Kenosha. That you have a little 5% now as these storm systems, these cells just kind of strengthen up a little bit as they start to push away. So this is going to be leaving pretty quickly, but look how it strengthens up as it goes towards Michigan, northern Indiana for later. Now, this don't have y'all in a tornado threat, but it is a big, broad area that will be in there for wind and hail as well. This is for the rest of the evening. You're still in it for wind. You're still in it for hail as well, but you don't have the tornado threat for the rest of the evening. That will be it. And everything really fires up once we get towards 7 and 8 o'clock for this evening on this side of the storms. And you can see your chances for tornadoes has changed as well. We just have these two areas that has a chance. So you do have some cells that's moving through over here for Iowa. Also was growing over here in Nebraska, eastern Wyoming as well. Still getting a little bit of snow in the higher elevations. As that pushes through all the way to 11 o'clock for tonight. All the way from Nebraska Iowa, you can see the hail cores in there. Also for southern Minnesota, going towards Minneapolis. Also, as you go towards 11 o'clock through midnight, even chances for large hail, all looking like southern Minneapolis uh, right there. As that keeps pushing through through 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, still early in the morning. So got a lot of storm cells pushing through for Nebraska. Now you're getting to South Dakota real good. Iowa, you still get some hail cores pushing through. And what was in Minnesota and Minneapolis is pushing out by 2 o'clock in the morning. But there's going to be multiple rounds. It's not just one round. Then you have some more storms pushing through all the way to 4, 5 o'clock in the morning, mainly as you go through South Dakota through Minnesota. Then Minnesota storm starts going through Wisconsin. But these strong storms from Nebraska going into Iowa all the way to southwestern Wisconsin, that's where it really starts to get strong, especially for tomorrow. And our chances for tornadoes will be in that region as those storms move through all day long. Now, first, you're going to get the first round. You're going to get some banding coming out all the way through 7 o'clock in the morning, all the way through early in the morning. You'll get this banding coming along with these hail cores in it. Also a little bit for Minnesota, but it's a lot stronger for Iowa as that comes on through. Then it'll go through Wisconsin as you go through the early a.m., almost noontime. But then it's going to strengthen up a little bit. Now for tomorrow, you have significant winds. You have chances for hurricane force winds and all of this circular section here. Even large hail, very large hail on the tail whip of that storm. But you still have the chances for strong tornadoes is expected from National Weather Service. That's their latest information so far. So just sticking with tornadoes, you can see as you go into tomorrow afternoon, that storm system wilds up while you're getting this banding. Now remember, all this banding up here, all of this banding is going to head to the north. It's going to be pushing winds with it. While you get this banding pushing on this storm cell, as this banding grows on here, this is going to push out 
and it's also going to grow southern as well. A bit, pretty big area of storms. Look at this how it grows all the way to 5 and 6 o'clock. There it goes all the way to 7. Just keeps growing. And now you got to imagine, there's winds behind this. We're not even talking about the chances for the strong tornadoes, the very strong tornadoes. We're just talking about regular thunderstorms first just coming through. And you can see this is a lot of banding coming through, bringing a lot of winds all even long for tomorrow. That should go to 10, 11 o'clock. Going over the lake, going towards Michigan, southern Illinois, northern Indiana, southern Missouri, going into northern Minnesota, UP of Michigan, into Canada. But look at this big whip. Look at this. Look at this big thing right here that's pushing out. That's going to be some serious storms for tomorrow as that comes along. And you still got to watch out for the large tornadoes. That's the most scariest part is it's all going to be rain wrapped, I do believe, for tomorrow. So when we look in that area and try and see, we see a lot of hail, of course, coming off when it kicks off. This is where you're getting your warm front right here. You're getting your cold front right there. You're getting your surface low. And you're getting these storms brewing as this goes further into the evening. That's where you have your best chance to get your large tornadoes as this passes by. These storms are actually pretty concerning from what I can see. And if it would be an actual ratio actually staying together with all them strong winds that whole time that would be a big problem that we got to deal with let me show you the information on the winds and the hail that's also coming with this but also look what they say here now you see they're talking about the chances for the tornadoes even the ef2 plus strength but they're talking about that line of storms i was talking about that potential to ratio that can come out of this likely evolution of a well-organized fast moving qlcs now remember a qlcs is a quasi linear line storm meaning you can have multiple hooks of storm cells in there bringing potentially multiple tornadoes it's not a definite but it is a possibility now the fast moving qlcs is capable of increasingly widespread intense damaging winds and a continued qlcs related tornado risk this scenario currently appears to be most probable across southern eastern iowa into northwest illinois and nearby far northern missouri the severe risk will persist into the upper Great Lakes region and middle Mississippi Valley overnight. So they see the risk of that as well. And if that holds together the whole time with the strength of the winds and the distance, it would be a duratio. Now look at this. This is from NATO cast. This is for tomorrow. And if you look there, you see a little red hatched area. But they have chances for significant severe tornadoes. That's EF2 or greater strength for southwestern Wisconsin across western to eastern Iowa, mostly from southwest to northeast. And you can see it also it's a little bit of northern Michigan as well. But look at this. Look at the banding that comes out. It's kind of broken up in this region right here. But this region starts bringing that banding of the 40 to 50 to 60. That brown is to 70. Just brings banding all the way across. Look at that. I think that is a chance for a potential to ratio and the storms that shoot to the north. So here you go. You got a storm shooting out as you go to 5 p.m. And here's your winds coming behind this. You're starting to pick up the 50, even getting the 60 in there as this is digging in towards Minnesota. As you go towards later in the evening, look, you still got your right there. You got your muscle scale convective system. And look how it pushes out with the winds coming right behind it all the way. 50, 60, 70, still showing over 80. This is the latest run I just updated to see what it showed. As all this starts heading to the north, as this bowing feature right here, as this bows out and then heads north, that's the bowing feature I'm talking about. So as that starts headed to the north, it's going to bring y'all winds with that as well. 50, 60, maybe even periods of 70. Look at all these high winds that's going to come with this. This is going to be a lot of power outages. And you can see as you go towards 4 p.m., all, all this strong hail. Watch how it fans out after that. You can also see the update while well, I still think it's going to last all the way till Sunday. So here we are for Wednesday. You see, see the percentage of the severe weather risk. You see Colorado State University, almost the same thing. A little bit of an uptick in certain other areas. 
Here you go for a Thursday. You have your little area from National Weather Service. You can see that from Colorado State University. They also see this in the Northeast. They've been showing this day after day also for this. And you can also see on SIPs, they're favoring that Northeast as well. So remember, that part is trending. But this is where it gets interesting. As you go into Friday, look, the same level of severity in the South Central. As you go into Sunday, the same level of severity in the South Central. Both of them being agreed by SIPs as well. Matter of fact, it stays that strength all the way till Sunday. Maybe even dissipate all the way till Monday. And your latest tropical update, we still have this first system coming in first week of June. We have our MDR waking up also. And we have more storms that's going to be building towards the middle of June. Thank you so much for your time, everybody. I hope this helps you understand what is happening around the corner. This storm is going to be a strong one. Make sure you charge your phones, take precautions, check on your neighbors. I think there's going to be some power outages definitely for tomorrow. Make sure they're safe as well. Take things out of your yard. Otherwise, there'll be projectiles possibly for your neighbors or maybe even hurt someone else down the road. Don't let that happen. Now, before you go, John 14, 1 through 7. This is Jesus speaking. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, unto Thomas, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also, and from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Amen. Have a great night, everybody. Remember, all glory goes to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I always hope he keeps you safe, you, your family, your neighbors, everyone that you know in touch, even your enemies, everyone, and forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Have a great night, everybody. I'll see you in the morning.